Um, before we start, just a quick show of hands. Who here flies wing suits? Put your hands up. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Neil here has already retired from wings in your career. Um, of those of you who fly wingsuits, how many of you have already been to Incline Labs or the in indoor wingsuit? Okay. Been to Incline Labs, so the indoor wingsuits. So ab about half of you, which is great. Um, some of this information, some of you guys already know. The rest of it's obviously going to be quite new, and there's a few little bits and pieces. So we'll get started. So welcome. My name, for those of you who've not met me before, I'm Chris Judd. Um, I've been skydiving since sort of 2006. Um, I've been wingsuiting uh, starting in 2011. I mostly jump in Devon, a place called Skydive Buzz Dunk as well. Um, and I, most people know me as I'm the guy that runs the Inclined Labs UK indoor wingsuit uh, at Stockholm, Sweden. Um, I've been at the tunnel since 2017, pretty much since they've opened, they opened a little bit before then. Um, and I'm kind of a, a UK ambassador for them. They don't really have an ambassadorial program, but I know the guys really well and they're very happy for me to come in and speak to you about indoor wingsuiting. So with that said, uh, let's get going. So as the name would suggest, indoor wingsuiting in Stockholm is, it's the world's first operational indoor wingsuit site in the world. Um, and it is actually based not in Stockholm, just outside a place called near Bromo, which is like a regional airport. And it's reusing a facility which was originally top secret. It's an aeronautical testing facility, which we'll cover in a bit more detail soon. The nice thing about it is that wingsuiting can now be used by everybody. There is no real prerequisite. So if you're aged seven or above with a of reasonable health, you can today fly a wingsuit. You don't need any of the prereqs, you don't need the C license, you don't need the CI sign off. You can fly a wingsuit today, no issues. Um, you don't have to have any prior skydiving experience, you do not have to have any prior wingsuit experience, you don't have to have any prior tunnel experience, you can just go, it's easy. When we're not doing that, we actually have some other interesting side businesses or some other interesting side components. The tunnel is used now by every major wingsuit manufacturer that you can think of as a development and testing site. We do some amazing design and development, and we'll cover some of that in a minute here. We also have a little side business in ski jumping. Um, so a lot of the Olympic commissions for countries will use the indoor wingsuit tunnel as a center for training out ski jumping. And uh, we periodically get involved in sort of TV and film work as well, where we've got this unique facility and we can actually do some filming inside. The tunnel predominantly is a training tool and it's used by some of the world's top national teams. So obviously we've got Turbo Ice Cloud who are here. Hello, Jack. Hello, Neil. Um, we've also got Venom, uh, who are current German at world national champions. We'll talk about them. Kakalak, essentially it is a national team training centre at this point. As a final point, it's used by some of the top wingsuit based jumpers in the world. So if you think of people like, who knows, hands up if you've met Fred Foygen. You know Fred? Yeah. Uh, Danny Roman? Amber? Espen? Yeah. They train there regularly. You can go there, you can see these guys, it's insane. So. A little bit show of hands. Um, put your hands up if you either have or flown one of these wingsuits. Okay. What about this one? No. So this is quite new, but it's effectively a calf made by Intruder. What about this one, Bertie? There he is. There he is. The Loki. Yeah, indeed. How about this wingsuit here, the Mako? Who's got a Mako? Who's flown a Mako? Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. We'll come back to these. Freaks. I can imagine quite a few people have got a freak, flown a freak. Yeah. Okay. And the last one, kind of less known, a Manta. Who's any of you seen or flown a Manta? Have you? In the tunnel. In the tunnel. Yeah, yeah. The thing about all of these wingsuits is if you've flown any of these wingsuits, you have directly benefited from the indoor wingsuit tunnel, whether you've been there or not. All of the suits I've just shown you have had active testing and development work done at the tunnel. They have built brand new suits. 
The fin, for example, is custom built by the tunnel for Intruder. The same with the Maker, and the Maker is a huge success story because as soon as they got that out onto the market, it was very quickly their biggest selling suit, and it was all built internal to the tunnel. So we do a lot of development work there. The place itself is really quite fascinating. I mean, I won't go into too much detail, but that's a file photo, and the, there's a tube component there, and that is a part of the air circuit. The tunnel itself was kind of originally built in the 40s as a collaboration between the United States and Swedish defense, just to get Sweden into the jet age. That was effectively what it was for. And it went on and it became a part, or it was a part of the development for things like the Saab Draken and the Saab Viking, which probably doesn't mean a lot, but these were frontline fighter jets from the 70s to the 90s for Sweden. For me, the most interesting thing actually was they had a, um, ESA, which is the European Space Agency, got into collaboration with NASA to essentially build and design the aero shell for something called the Cassini Huygens program. And that was essentially a space probe that they sent to Saturn and they landed it on the moon of Titan. The aero shell was designed in the tunnel. It has pedigree with aeronautical design. They finished with it. The Swedish government finished with it in the 2010s. And as you would imagine, um, quite a lot of people in the area kind of knew what it was. I mean, yes, it was secret. And yes, it was supposed to be kind of a hush-hush facility. But like most of you know, most of people would, if you live around the area, you kind of know what's going on. And two of them were Peter and Anton. And they managed to get access to this in 2015. And the original idea, as best as I understand it, was they weren't going to do wingsuits. They didn't care about that initially. They actually wanted to do parachutes inside. They wanted to fly parachutes inside the tunnel. Um, and they went away and they did a whole series of studies and it eventually evolved into flying wingsuits. And the interesting thing is they went off and they spoke to various academic institutions and various industry leaders and they went, you're crazy, you can't do that, that's a stupid idea. You want to fly a wingsuit inside, no idea, not going to happen. And this is where they got their name, the crazy ones, because they were just told they were crazy, this was never going to be a thing. They went on and they did it anyway. They built the tunnel and Anton and Peter were the first people to fly or contain sustained wingsuit flight indoors. By September 2017, they got it to such a point with a training program and instruction team so that they can now start doing commercial operations. And that's kind of really where they started. Just some, I don't know, some of you might have seen these photos. Um, those of you who've been to the tunnel know kind of what it looks like now. Um, but back in, the, back in the day, it was a bit Heath Robinson. There were holes and bits of wood and all sorts going on. Um, this top photo over here, this is Peter and Anton, they're doing their first two ways. Again, probably the first people in the world to fly indoor wingsuits consistently inside. Photo over there, um, that's Peter looking, I believe that's Anton again on the, on the safety system. Um, and just early prototyping. Those of you who know where that is, that's the second floor of the building and the only thing stopping them between and a 15 foot drop onto concrete are two bits of rope, so good safety there chaps. Um, and this final photo, anybody know who this is? I mean, obviously I've told you who that is. This is Robbie Peshnik. He's the founder of Phoenix Flight, um, and they were very early involved in this process, in the design and the development of that wingsuit. The best thing I like about the, all of these photos is this photo in the top right-hand corner, which is, as I said, it's uh, Peter and Anton. Peter is obviously so convinced and so pleased with his invention that he feels safe enough to be outside with a motorcycle helmet on while the guy inside is messing around. Um, the, rea the reality is actually it was very, very noisy. There was lots of vibration and they had to kind of protect their ears. So that's what's going on there. So this was a few years ago now. This is what the tunnel looks like today. Um, it's about 11 meters long. It's about four meters wide and it's about three and a half meters tall. You can get, if you're good, you can get seven wingsuiters in there flying all at the same time. Um, the floor is, essentially it's like a toddler soft play area. It's like several feet thick of soft bouncy material with like faux leather. The photo is a little bit old in that they've actually added some skirts, um, cushions down the side, but that is essentially what it looks like inside. 
The tunnel itself is a square shape. There are shaping veins on the outside to essentially ensure you've got smooth airflow end to end. Um, and it's one of the most advanced tunnels in the world because in flight, we can change its glide angle. So it starts at 1.6, which kind of looks like a big 45 degree angle slope. But in flight, we can drop it quite quickly. And it goes from 1.6 to 2.6, which is quite flat. And you can do that very, very quickly. The other thing that we've got is we've basically got, I, I call them skirts, wingsuits. We've got every single type of skirt in every color and size. There will be a wingsuit that will fit every single one of you in there. You won't need to bring one. You won't need to worry about it. They've got all of the sizes already pre-built and helmets. So it's all kind of prepared and ready to go. Now, I've said all of that, and obviously what we don't do is you turn up and we give you a waiver and then we kind of just throw you in the tunnel and turn it on and see you later, work it out for yourself. We don't do that. We actually have a proper training program, and I'm just going to quickly talk you through that. Normally what will happen is that you will come in, and a bit like a normal tunnel that you will sign a, a, a waiver, like I won't see you if I die, same as any vertical tunnel, and then you're going to go through a little bit of ground school. And for those of you who are into the wingsuiting position, you'll understand you know, what that looks like and how that feels. They'll go over that again. Um, and then they're going to fit you with a custom harness. And what that custom harness does is it allows you to be connected to the tunnel via two main hard points. And it allows you to fly around the tunnel safely. You can't touch any of the walls. You can't touch the back net but it gives you enough flexibility to be able to start flying around in that tunnel. And what they'll do is they'll give you some basic instructions. I want you to go up, I want you to come down, I want you to fly left, I want you to go right. They'll teach you how to take off and to land. And they will do that in the safety of this harness system. As soon as you're ready, and as soon as you've demonstrated enough skill with that, the next thing that they're going to do is they're going to put you on the leash. I call it a dog leash. It looks a lot like a dog leash. And really, all it is, is it's a climbing harness. Those of you who go climbing, whether it's indoors or outdoors, it's just a climbing harness. You put one on, and then on the clip on the front, they will connect the dog leash. And it will go through. Do you know what I mean if I say a camera hole on the front of a wingsuit? That is. It, they'll just put it through there. And then from there, you can fly freely around the tunnel. You're still holding it. The instructor is still holding on to you. But now you've got the full range. You can go anywhere in the tunnel you want, all the way to the ceiling, all the way to the floor. This is where you're going to really start to learn that balance that you need to fly in the tunnel. Once you've got enough skill and you can fly safely on the leash, at some point, they probably won't tell you this, they'll just hand you the leash. And they'll stand back and go, here we go. Um, and they'll wait. And they'll wait. And some people crash and they go, <laughs> okay, I'll start again. And other people fly. Eventually, you will get to a point where you can navigate around the tunnel by yourself, nobody holding on to you, no safety rope, and you can get what's called a pro ticket. And it's just a checkbox on the booking system. And all that pro ticket says is, I can fly safely in the wingsuit tunnel by myself. I don't need anybody else there. I can fly by myself. That pro ticket is it's the end of what we call the startup pack but it's the beginning of one of the most um, accelerated learning journeys that you can go through in wingsuiting. Hello, mate. How you doing, dude? That's all right. How you doing? He's got a Guinness. Very good. <laughs> yes. Hello. How you doing? So now you've got now, the, now you've got your pro ticket. Now you can get on to bigger and better things. And the thing that I want to show you now, or to demonstrate to you, is kind of how long it takes. Now, your own journey will vary based on you, how quickly you learn and how well you get on with it. But on average, we find it takes about 35 to 45 minutes, I've averaged it, per section. So most people are got a pro ticket, they've demonstrated they can fly safely around in about 40 minutes. We can go from there into wingsuit 2 type work. So you can do over, unders, docks, all sorts of crazy things before getting on to things like two ways, three ways, start on the basics of back flying and the basics of acrobatics. 
as a general rule, what we would say is no more than sort of 30, 40 minutes per day. So we've just had an excellent session by Lucy, so thank you, Lucy, for that. And Lucy made a comment about brain breaks. That's exactly what that is, right? The idea is that there's so much going on that a lot of people get flustered after a while and they stop learning. And the time was superb at this. I'll just go, just stop, stop. You can hit the wall all you want. We don't want you to hit the wall. Come out, have a beer, have some barbecue, go and have a sleep. You come back the next day and you'll absolutely hammer it into the ground. And that's exactly what most people do. So as a general rule, we don't tend to recommend any more than 30, 40 minutes. The other big thing with this is, the one thing that we like to do is, if you go to the tunnel and you've paid for like three hours at the tunnel, and you've booked three hours at the tunnel, but you only fly two hours, you've still got that one hour. It just stays on your account. It doesn't expire. You don't lose the money. It's there. The point is, they're there to support your learning journey. So they're not interested in basically rinsing you for all of your money. They want you to get better and to get good. Now, no introduction to the tunnel can be complete really without giving you an introduction to the types of people that you're going to meet there, specifically the instruction team. Um, and I'm going to very quickly go through. I can tell you now, I get that I'm representing these guys, but I can tell you right now that these are some of the nicest people you'll meet. And even if you go to speak to anybody who has actually flown an indoor wingsuit, you will find some incredible people there. So I'm going to very briefly introduce you to them and to give you a view on the kind of people that you've got, okay? Patrick and Arvid are the current Acro indoor and outdoor world champions as part of Team Venom. They have world records for the number of docks. They've got over a thousand hours each in the tunnel uh, and they are multiple national German champions. Pilvi, um, she was the original, what we call the original chief instructor. Um, she is now basically a people manager, a general manager there. She holds a Finnish women's world record for flocking as well as general records for flocking. And she's one of the very first Phoenix Fly coach examiners that ever got uh, awarded. We've got Flavian. Flavian is the French national performance champion. He's also sixth in the world when it comes to performance. He went to the Worlds last year, came sixth, absolutely annihilated it. Phil, 7,000 skydives. He's got pretty much every ticket under the sun. He is a squirrel wingsuit developer um, and is a wingsuit base jumper. Tomic is quite new. Um, has anybody watched Tomic's aerodynamic violence video on YouTube? Yeah. Mad. This guy is insane. So he is a sponsored athlete. He gets given again, squirrel development pilot. The man is insane what he can do in a wingsuit. Final two, Paul. Paul was the newest member of the team, and I'll tell you a very quick story about Paul. I first met Paul properly summer last year when we were doing summer camp. He turned up at the drop zone in Sweden, and we were saying, you know, what are you going to do? He's here to, he had his Freak 5. And he said, oh, I'm, I'm just going to take this out for a flight. And he then proceeds to basically do a triple barrel roll on his back, back-to-back -back transition and land. I'm like, all right, you know, how long have you been doing that for? He said, oh, yeah, this is my 30th wingsuit jump. What, in that suit? No, 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 ever. In 30 jumps, he's been able to get that far. The impression I get with him, he's a bit like, you know, Max Verstappen when he was new, like future world champion. Paul, I call him Lando because he looks a bit like Lando Norris. And then finally, you've got Alex. Um, Alex came second in the 23 US championships. He is a lead wingsuit developer on the bat. Who here has flown the bat? Anyone's flown the bat? Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, um, squirrel, are, uh, squirrel wingsuits basically use the tunnel as a development center. They call it the lab. You sometimes see it on their social media posts. The bat is a custom wingsuit that you currently can't buy on their website but they built for the tunnel, so they are custom wingsuits. And actually, Alex basically designed that with Peter, um, as well as the fin wingsuits. If those guys aren't good enough, that's fine, because we've got these guys. Externally, we've also got access to some of the best external coaches. So those of you who know Danny, stick your hands up. If you know Danny Roman, yeah. What about Amber and Espen? I think most people know Amber and Espen. They're external coaches as well. My point to you is that basically between our in-house coaches and our external coaches, at least for my money, 
these guys represent the top 1%. You cannot get any better than this right now. They are superb. If they can't do it in a wingsuit, it just isn't worth doing. Wouldn't even bother. Got some videos. You ready? So, uh, in our first video, yeah. <laughs> in our first video, so what we're doing here is we've actually got three guys from the UK. These are just UK guys. Uh, and we needed um, a training tool that we could use to pass to one another. So what we're doing here, actually, the, the, the point of showing you this is these are three people from the UK. So you've got Neil Taylor, Sam Bainbridge, and John Duffy. They're doing a three-person weave. There's not like hours and hours and hours of experience here. And yet there they are flying within a few inches of each other, able to navigate the burble, able to navigate in this space, and to be able to get a, a good dock on our training <laughs> tool. Yes, yeah. We call it our training tool. They do, yeah. This next video um, is interesting. So what, you, what you've got on this next video is, this is Pilby in pink, and the person flying in orange is Ruth Morrison. So Ruth has done a little bit of wingsuiting before, never been to the tunnel, and within 90 minutes, she's on her back, flying around quite happily. It's the kind of skill set that we can teach if you're willing. All right? They are superb at what they do. The big thing that we are really interested in is team training. We want to give those skills out. So the way that we do that is that there's, you can obviously buy team time like any vertical tunnel. Um, and as a demonstration of that, this is Turbo Ice Cloud. Um, and this is them training for the Worlds and the Nationals. And as you can see, they're basically going through a whole series of maneuvers. The point here is that everyone is, basically they're flying within a few inches of each other at the same airspeed, at the same, same glide ratio, in a stable, consistent manner. It doesn't matter if they hit the floor, doesn't matter if somebody spins out, you can just push off of the ground and you can recover. It's all about repetition, 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 repetition. And what they're doing and what you can do here is that as soon as you can get this into your head and you're not worried about the rest of it, you're not worried about parachute deployment, you're not worried about navigation, you can focus on the movements, you can get the flow and the dynamics into your head and you can just repeat, 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 repeat. That's the value this brings. The nice thing as well is that it's not just us that get to play. Um, I'm going to show you a few videos. So this first video is Arvin and Patrick. And what they're doing now is they're going to do something called the blade, which is mental hard. They are essentially side flying. It's something I've seen them try and do. Uh, and that they did as part of their free routine. And that's one of the reasons why they won the world championships. No one's done that before. They were practicing it in the tunnel. In November, the guys got bored, so they just decided that they were going to make Christmas trees. So they started making Christmas trees. Again, if you can do it here, you can do it up there. Okay? They've got a chance to explain and a chance to play and mess around. And then the last one. You know when uh, at the end of like a vertical tunnel, they, all the instructors get in and they do something stupid? Yeah? Well, um, this is what it looks like when they do it. There's no plan rip, they're just following each other. And those that are Freak Fives, about 2.1, 2.2 glide ratio. There's no plan here, they're just ripping around as fast as they can. And they can get up to some really silly things when they want to. Um, if you go looking in some of their Instagram stuff, you'll see them flying bin bags. Has anybody seen Ghost Riders? So Ghost Rider is literally what well, they'll take a wingsuit, they won't get in it, they'll turn the tunnel on and they'll just jump on it and then they'll fly around on top of the tunnel. When they got bored of ghost riding in bin bags, somebody from Mexico turned up with, you know, one of those uh, Mexican ponchos? They started flying that, because, <laughs> you know. <laughs> they got bored, they got bored. So, for us, what is the UK, what is IWS kind of help with, with the, the UK scene? Well, there's a number of different ways of looking at this, but. The one thing that I would say is, I, I know Nationals last year, it, it was great, and Peter Lee did the best they could with the weather. Um, 15 out of the 24 medals that were provided during that competition 
went to people that went to IWS. <laughs> now, obviously this is people like Turbo Ice Cloud who are now back-to-back -back national champions and well done guys again on that one. Good job. Um, two out of the three on the open category, so that was Dan May and Liam Byrne. I'm assuming you know both of those guys. Dan actually is at the tunnel at the moment today. Um, the intermediate performance category winner as well. Uh, and it's the same story from the year before. I know also that wasn't a great competition year and they were doing the best they can with weather. But the tunnel is now becoming one of those indispensable parts of what we do in our training for wing seating. So if you really want to get into competition or you really want to get better at what you're doing, come to the tunnel, we can help you with this. For me, I, I kind of get asked sometimes, like, what do I think is the big thing that the tunnel's provided? And I, I'd say there's two points. I've shown you lots of videos of people being silly, making Christmas trees and doing barrel rolls and what have you. But actually, the two most important things that I think the tunnel's provided is it's standardised a glide ratio. Everyone is kind of now flying at roughly the same angle. Everyone has that kind of default setting. And everyone is now beginning to think in terms of inches rather than metres. It's not like I need to go over there and they suddenly whoosh and they've gone three miles that way very quickly. Everything is very gradual. And they've learned that because if they did the big whoosh movement in the tunnel, you hit a wall. It's not pleasant. Don't do that. So and this is some of the things that, that we're seeing. The organisation as well is, is quite interesting. They're, quite, they're, they're very happy to bring people in. And what we do is um, they will run camps. So we, we run three camps a year for the UK group. And it's, it's available on UK Facebook page, on the UK Wingsuit Facebook page. Um, and we just have some basic rules. And the basic rules are, look, we don't want any more than 16 people. We could bring 30 people. We could bring 35. We don't want any more than 16 because it starts to feel like a sausage factory, in, out, in, out. We just want it to be chilled and relaxed and quite calm. Um, and when we hit 16 people, it tends to get to about private hire. So it's like, do we want tunnels there? Let's go. And we just play. And we have a general vibe, and it's quite relaxed, and it's just quite cool. We do flying in the afternoons, in the days, and then we just go out and have barbecues and parties, and it's, it's just fun. It's just fun. Some photos. Um, Liz. She came in December camp, did a really good job. Like in 60 minutes, she got a pro ticket and she was starting wingsuit two, which was superb. Um, who remembers this gentleman here? Hands up. So this guy here was one of the bits of entertainment. That's the only photo I can show you of the thing that he did, but the tunnel brought this guy in. Um, and um, he, what do you think he's got attached to his tongue right now? It's a, it's a mouse trap. Yeah, that's how we started. It got worse. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yes, um, we have fun. We have Neil and Jack and uh, who's that? Patrick, it was Patrick, wasn't it? They decided that, you know, we're going to do some proper team training. So, all right, yep, fine, go for it, not a problem. Um, Mona and NASA doing some flying around there. Some more of the three-way from earlier. Um, we've got... Mr. Mizzy, who isn't here, but um, Mr. Mizzy has a training tool on his head, and um, there's a reason for that. We normally kind of nominate uh, an award of the day, and um, basically he, he managed to get this award because I was flying at the top of the tunnel, and he was messing around somewhere at the bottom, and there's, in the left-hand side, there's a big emergency stop button, right, that you'd hit in the panic mode. He managed to hit it with his ass. He was flying along, completely failed hit it with his bottom, and the next thing I know, I'm now at the top of the tunnel, looking down, going, bugger. <laughs> Bang. <that up>. No. <coughs> um, and this one on the end, this one's quite fun. Um, one of the nice things the tunnel does is it actually demonstrates where the burble is. A lot of you will now obviously understand what burbling is and where the burble is, but actually it's not where most people think it is. A lot of people believe it's kind of coming off at a 45 degree angle behind us. It's not. It's a lot further down. If you know that, in the tunnel, given that it's safe and there's lots of padding, you can use that as a weapon. <laughs> so uh, I was on my back chasing people around, and this is Phil Greenland, and I thought, I'm going to burble him. So I flew over to Phil, over to Phil, got as big as I could, thought, got him. Phil then decided he was going to take me out, and this is how we ended up with a photo of me bunt-stopping Phil, because he basically took me out at the same time. So what are we doing next? The Stockholm Tunnel 
is still under huge amounts of active development. This is the new fan that you can see, and this will come up in a minute. Um, and it is way more efficient, and we can start hitting some much higher air speeds now, which means that we can fly well, not only bigger suits, um, but we can do it a lot more efficiently and cheaper. 2024, this year, is going to see the construction of a brand new tunnel in Slovenia. Um, it's next to a brewery, so those of you who know Jonas know how pleased he is because he's going to go and speak to them about maybe building an inclined labs brew that he can then drink all day. He's pleased about this. Um, and we've also got all of the land and permits in place for a new facility in Florida as well. So it's expanding, it's growing. So having told you all about like the kind of things that we do at Tunnel, giving you a few videos of it, the next obvious question is, okay, go on then, how much does it cost? Things are expensive right now. All right. It's about half price what you're paying for iFly. There is no concept of uh, like an off-peak, on-peak. It's just an anytime ticket. So what you're getting at at the moment is um, for this kind, so what we've got is all of the packs available to you, <coughs> the amount of money in UK pounds, um, and as I say, it includes all the instruction team that I've just told you about, all of the kit hire, uh, all of the safety equipment. The account money never expires. It's yours. Do what you want with it. It's all good. Um, and as I say, it includes coaching. So to give you an example, it's about seven and a half thousand pounds for five hours in iFly. It's about 3.7 in the tunnel. Different economics, I know, different countries, but it's an interesting place to start. As a final thing, just to quickly show you, there's a new thing I think, some of you might have seen this on social media, but I'll show it to you now, okay? So, because we've got this new fan, we can do some new things with the new fan. And one of the things they're going to start thinking about training out is this. We can start teaching TR1 in there. You've got three instructors, one of them's flying a onesie. Let's go away. Um, but sustained tracking body flight is now a possibility, and they are going to think about teaching that out right now. We can do TR1 in here now. So that's kind of what that's saying. Um, you know, there'll be some announcements about that in the next few weeks, but that's what's upcoming at the moment. So, um, I want to show you one more quick slide and then go back to it. So, this is actually a slide for Jack. Ready, Jack? <laughs> okay. Um, before I go back to questions, this is a slide. Uh, what you've got there is a QR code. The QR code will take you to a seven-question questionnaire about wing seating. It's going to give you the opportunity to start thinking about and shaping what you would like the future of British wing seating should be. Um, we're going to probably hold a, we're going to hold a discussion in the bar a bit later, but what I'd like to do is just invite you all to participate in this um, so that you guys have an opportunity to have a say about what you want British wing seating to be going forward. I'll just give you an opportunity to take that. And that's me done. If I go back for questions, any questions on any of that? <coughs> Slovenia is uh, getting built now, uh, spring next year, 25 about. They haven't put some dates on it, but they've started building it. And you know, Jonas and co have been out there and done a fair bit of eating and drinking. So, you know, yes, Mr. Bertie. So is Slovenia to know the same cost? Is it going to run? Is it for me to go as a wingsuit pilot and yeah. go to Slovenia, exactly the same cost as Stockholm. Um, so the pricing structure for that hasn't been announced yet, but so I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. But as soon as that's available, that'll be on their website. You know what they're like. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Ryan. I have a question for you. Um, I've never flown a wingsuit yet. Yep. And you did mention now they're getting a bigger fan. Yes. That you can fly at higher speeds. Yep. So you can use bigger wing seats? We've, we've always been able to use large wing suits. So. Am I right in saying bigger wing suits actually fly faster? Because I would have thought it'd be the other way because of the lack of surface area. I mean, it's so, um, wingsuit dynamics are a bit weird. So the speed of a wingsuit is dictated by a number of things. The big one to look at, if you're trying to work out how fast a wingsuit is, is to look at the tail, just how big that tail is. So the tail of the wingsuit is actually the engine room, if you will. 
So if you were to go and look at things like a vampire, like a competition vampire or, or a sea race, you will find that it passes the, feet, the base of the feet. That is your engine room. The arm wings aren't actually doing a lot for you. I, I know you, they are effectively just stabilizers on a bike. It's a bit of a lie there, but let's just imagine go with it. So you, these are your stabilizers. But if you wanted to work out how fast a suit can go, whether one suit's quicker than another, genuinely just look at selling. Is that due to you can fly it at a steeper angle? You can fly any suit at any angle, but most suits are cut with a, like a 1.6 degree, 1.6 GR angle. And then it's the rest of it's like the leading edge, the way the shoulder is placed, the way the wing is cut in, the size of the leg wing. There's a number of factors that kind of dictate it. So yeah. Are you actually generating some form of lift with the leg wing then? Yeah, you can do. Yeah. So like in the, one of the things that we'll do in the tunnel is um, we'll, we'll have these batons. And one of the things they'll get you to do is they'll just get you to do that. All of a sudden, your arm wings are gone, so you'd expect it to, no. You can just open out your shoulders a bit more, and you can keep flying. So it's genuinely just a body thing with the leg is just producing that kind of forward motion. So yeah, the, these things aren't generating lift. I mean, there's a little bit of a lie there. But in general, yeah, they're not generating lift. They're just stabilizers. Yeah. Any other questions? Hey. Yeah. Go for it. Yes, of course. Um, what you were saying about how they initially wanted to look at canopy flight. Yeah. If, for, if you're now kind of building your own and designing your own tunnels from scratch, yeah. is there a, a possibility of doing canopy flight in a tunnel from you know, I, designing You know, I think that's something they may come back to at some point. Yeah. Um, right now yeah. it's, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know that they've had canopies in there. There's, well, uh, there's, there's photos of canopies in there, um, but, you know, it's something that they'll look at. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Well, hi. Uh, thanks for this. Uh, Not a problem. Well, now that you convinced me, is there any promotion running? Um, <laughs> <laughs> is there any promotion running? Um, so the best thing to do, uh, gen genuinely, the best thing to do, the, the way, actually, I'll tell you the way it works, um, is the answer is not in the minute, but... Um, what we do is, in, in March Camp, what a lot of people do is that they'll go and they'll buy about two hours of time. But they end up flying way more than two hours because what will happen is that you'll, you'll get your ticket and then you'll start flying with people and then they'll stop flying with you. So most of the time people will buy two hours but they'll fly three or four. So no, but if you go with the group, you know what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? No. Yes, Andy, go for it. Training tool. No, um, the training tool. <laughs> well, <laughs> I will explain the training tool again. Uh, have I have I been able to replace the training tool? Oh, sorry. Yeah, can anybody spot the training tool? Um, yes. Um, the the story with the training tool is um, the gentleman that I described earlier with the mouse trap on his tongue. Um, who here knows Liam Hardman or met Liam Hardman? Yeah. Liam took the training tool and he put it in this, the, that gentleman's bag, thinking that he was going to pull it out as part of his entertainment. He saw it, thought this was very exciting, and he ran off with it and it was never seen again. So, no. No, but we'll build another one. It's all good. It's all good. Any other questions? Yeah, oh yeah sorry, yeah. So, um, sometimes I... Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, in the tunnel, they do have a couple rigs, dead dummy rigs, um, and you can you can use those. And there is a difference actually when you're flying a wingsuit without the rig versus when you. So, for example, if you're doing a transition onto your back, you've got a lot less motion because without it, you can use your back to help you move. Obviously, with a rig, it's a bit different. So, yeah, 100%. We've we've got a couple of rigs just for that job, indeed. Yeah. Hey. So, yeah, so the thing to do is, what you would do is that you would go and get your pro ticket. And what that would do for you is it would give you the ability to learn to fly for yourself, okay? And to get there, obviously, you've gone through the custom harness, you've gone through the leash, and now you're flying for yourself. When you bring your own wingsuit in, and I definitely would recommend that, what you do is then you go back one step with your own suit and you spend two minutes on the leash. Can you take off? Can you land? Can you crash and take off successfully? How would you get the leash 
Sorry? How would you get the lead shot? So if you've got a camera hole, that's fine. It can go in the side. All right. So you've, you've got a cut in here. Yeah. That would do that. So absolutely fine. So basically, just after you've got your pro ticket, that's a good time because that's when you're going to start learning new things anyway. So you can start learning backfly. You can start learning a proper two, three-way work. And if you want to do it in your own suit, bring it on. No big deal. Yeah. Any other questions? No? Great. Well, thank you very much. That's Incline Labs. <laughs>